Hello, good morning all. Good evening. Let's wait for a couple of minutes to kickstart this demo session. Let's wait for a couple of minutes. Hello, good evening all once again. So let's start at 
Okay, so we'll wait for a couple of minutes to kickstart this demo session so that we can add more participants in this demo session. Please ping yes in the chat box if you are clear about Am I audible? Please ping yes in the chat box. Thank you. Let's start at 8.4 sharply. Okay, let's start. Good evening, all. Uh, today, we are going to explore the Spring Boot and Microservices Day 1. Okay, I'm sharing my presentation. Please make sure it is visible to you all. Please confirm. Is it? Visible to you all? Okay, good, good. Okay, let's start now. Okay, so this particular batch is number 329, which is about Spring Boot and Microservices. Okay, my name is Mohammed Yasir. I have a 17 year of industrial experience in banking and BFSI domain. So once again, I thank you all to registering this demo class on Spring Boot and microservices. So let me go through the process before starting this session. It's a general information. The first three session will be free to attend. And from fourth session onwards, the Zoom meeting link will be shared to the registered participants only. The first two sessions, a recording will be uploaded in Logica Lab Technologies YouTube channel. And we will share the link in the WhatsApp community that we will be highlighting here. This is the chat window. You can log in and you can enroll it so that you will get the batch updates and announcement options there. And day three recording session will be shared to you only the paid participants only. So no batch shifting and no amount refund. So once you are satisfied about these demos classes, you can go for the enrollment process. And all the session recording and notes will be accessed through the LMS, that is Graphy. So whatever the presentation we are going to walk through and notes, those will be shared at the end of the day in the Graphy. You can go through it and you can revise the concept. So this is the support number. You can call up and ask for the any queries you can clarify it. So hope you guys are clear about it. Just ping chat yes in the chat box. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's get into the our microservices and Spring Boot architecture today. So I'm going to present it now. Just hit S in the comment box if you are able to see the PowerPoint about mostly in Spring Boot and microservices. Okay. 
so as i said i have a good amount of experience in banking and bfsa domain and i love to solve the problem for the bank and their customers and especially by designing the strong flexible systems by using my expertise skill on spring boot and microservices so how many people in this group know about little about spring boot and microservices just check sp in the chat box so people who know about something about spring boot and microservices just ping sp in the chat box so that i'll get the understanding how many people are aware of it where to start okay then i treat it as a no one knows about thing let's start from the basics okay okay so usually one minute so i will start with the agenda of the day one which is about so what are the course content we deliver to you right that's a day one today so in day one what are the topics we are going to cover up that's what you can able to see here the first one is what type of software architect is available in the market and what is soa service oriented architecture and monolithic architecture why microservices why exact what exactly we are going to learn out of this session about microservices what's the purpose of microservices and what is the advantage of microservices and what is the challenge with the microservices and following by we are going to discuss about why the spring boot is required to build the microservices architecture at last what is the difference between spring and spring boot just give me a comment section yes if you know spring no if you don't spring just type if you know spring just type s yes. if you don't know spring just type no i can see uh, only one guy prane has giving ping as s yes. the others are going with no okay so spring is an essential to understand what is spring boot because you are going to build a system in spring boot definitely you required a spring knowledge also so that you can easily build the system by using spring boot configurations and yes yes pradeep you are right so we need a spring because spring boot is an abstract on top of spring ecosystem so the one should know about spring before jumping into the spring boot okay thank you so we will cover up what are the possibility related to the spring while learning the spring boot also let's get into the next slide which is about motivation code definitely we need some intention to learn something new in our life that is the driving force to learn in our life 
So you do have yeah, some intention in life. That's why you might be enrolling or interested on this. Are you able to see, see my uh, presentation PPT? Just type S if you see the PPT. Okay, one minute. Uh, let me quickly do that. How about now? Is it fine now? Hello? Is it fine now? You can able to see my microservices agenda one. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I was talking about the motivation quote because everyone should have the intention in the life to learn something so that we can go for a next step in the life. The same way you might be also interested on this particular Spring Boot and microservices session. So once you believe on you, definitely you have done the halfway. So usually I start my session with some motivational quote so that we will be energized and we can focus on the learning things. That's the pattern. Okay, next, let me go to the next one. Okay, so you can able to view my next slide also, right? Please give yes in the chat box. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so okay, so today, mostly our topic will be theoretical because it's a day one, something I have to give you a basic information to you. Only then we can go to the next level, day two, where we have some hands-on. Then following by, we have a lot of hands-on, fully hands-on. No theoretical, less theoretical, I can say. 80 percentage hands-on and 20 percentage, which is about theoretical. But today, day one and day two, maximum will be a theoretical because I need to introduce the system to you. Only then you can get into that and get your practice and hands dirty about it. Yeah, the prerequisite for this particular Spring Boot and microservices is you must be know the Java. You must know about the Spring, how internally it works. So just type, if you know Java, in the comment box, yes. Right now, I got only one S from Saraswati. Fine, uh, fine, Pradeep. I think we can able to manage. When I'm going to explain about the Spring Boot hands-on, I'll give you a clear picture about how Spring internally works. So you will get it easily about Spring Boot also. So people who don't know Java, Definitely, this is the must skill to learn the Spring Boot. Without Java, we can't. That's a very basic skill, actually, in Java. On top of that, Java only, we are going to build the system with help of Spring Boot framework. People who don't know Spring, that fine, completely fine. We will try to accommodate while we are doing the hands-on so that you will be comfortable day by day. I guarantee that. I'm just repeating again. Java is the fundamental thing required to go for a Spring Boot on microservices. Uh, Saraswati, it is completely fine if you don't know Spring. While doing the Spring Boot hands-on, I will be explaining you how the spring work internally so that you can catch up. 
the spring boot session it's not a what is what kind of session it's completely hands on oriented with the real time example so you will be easily connect into the session you can receive the content 100% Okay, I'm jumping into the next one. Okay, so if we are following the set of rules in our session, following session, then this particular learning will be very smooth for everyone in the session. I will be classified as the first five to seven minutes goes to the recap of the last session on day one, day three, whatever day it is. The first five to seven minutes Let's go for a recap. And the, exactly the new session will start at 8, 10 p.m. IST sharply going forward. Third point, if you have any doubt in ongoing topic, please raise the hand. We will discuss then and there and clear out it because that's the very important step. If you are not clear at the moment, raise the flag. We will discuss and move on. But the topic or doubt, what do you have, which is out of the context might be due to your excitement. That time, we will discuss that questionnaire is in our doubt clarification test time, which is about the last five minutes of the session, like 8.55 to 9 p.m. IST. It should be the, I need a full participant in this session so that you will be fully getting what exactly I'm going to teach in this session. So feel free, ask the question for the better clarity. Okay, this is the sixth rule we are going to strictly follow so that everyone will be get benefited. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so before going to the software architect, I want to understand, so how many people in this chat box know what is architecture? Just type Y in the chat box. Have you heard about architecture? Okay, or design something, if you know, just type Y in the chat box. Okay, Pradeep. Bengal. Saraswati, why? Yes. We have 13 members in this group. I need some only few replies from the guys. Okay, got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for the reply. So, so software architecture is nothing but you can really connect with your building the blocks. For example, if you are going to construct a new home, okay, so there are base materials, we can say cement, iron rod, and brick. So many are there. Those are our essential part. Let's pick the brick, okay? So brick is a fundamental component to build your home. Okay, so something similar to that, if you are going to build your mobile app or web development, definitely the software architect is the fundamental structure of your software system. So when you are planning for your home, definitely you have a blueprint on your hand. So where the bedroom, where the hall, where the kitchen is supposed to be located, everything will be present in the layout, right? So same way, when you are going to design any of the software architect, then 
you have to come up with the what are the systems or structure supposed to be in your software design. That's the good software architect. You can't build the kitchen when you enter the home, right? That's not the good look, look and feel. Same way, you when you are designing any of the software, your own mobile software or mobile app, you have to be very cautious about how you are designing the mobile app so that in the long run, your mobile app will be outstandingly perform. Otherwise, it will be running into the difficulty and it will go for a drawback. So software architecture is a very fundamental structure you have to understand. Each and every developer supposed to understand how this architecture is designed and what are the components are part of that design. How it is interacting between two modules. So each and every developer supposed to understand this communication. Only then they can come up with a very good performance oriented mobile app or desktop applications. So that's why software architect is a yeah, fundamental for everyone, not only the software architects. It's for mobile developers, software backend developers, everyone supposed to know. So only then we can come out of the good design. Let's move on to this next slide. So people, any do you have any doubt in this particular point of time? Please raise your hand or you can shoot up your question in the chat box. Okay, then let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so when you talk about the software architecture, we have so many architecture style is there in the market. Okay, I don't want to discuss all those in this session. I'll pick only four. Okay, in that sense, so monolithic architecture is a classical type of architecture. And second one is microservices architecture that we are going to explore in detail from the tomorrow clan class onwards. The third one is service oriented architect. The fourth one is event driven architecture. So those are common type of architecture which is available in the market style. Let's explore the monolithic architecture in the next slide. So monolithic architects, a traditional software development approach when you are designing any application, it will be considered as a single unit. For example, if, if you are going to develop any of the software, right? So ideally, what are the models it will be like? You need to log into the application. Then if it is a e-commerce application, you are going to search the product. Then if you are interested on the product, you have to increment the order and you have to place the order. Then you have to go for the payment. Then the things will be shipment into your delivery address. Okay, right? There are so many components are there like starting from login order management payment model inventory model and notification model there are so many n number of modules are there right this entire modules will be clubbed together as a single unit as a single source that is called monolithic architecture Right, so that's what the point two says. All the components meaning user interface layer, business logic layer, and data access layer all will be tightly coupled together as a single unit and single 
source code in the application. So that's called monolithic architecture. Our traditional model still there are a lot of application is running in monolithic architecture. For example, CMS, Content Management Service Inventory, that is still with monolithic architecture. It's, it is live in the market. So I'll go with the example like desktop application, traditional desktop application. There are some yearly web applications also still in monolithic application. If you take an example, my BFSA domain rights, there are, it's a very sensitive oriented application, right? Bank related information. That's why still banks are afraid to move those monolithic architecture into microservice architecture. They are in the pipeline of migrating that monolithic architecture into microservices architecture. Slowly, one by one, they are doing. It's not just like that we can't convert it. It need a n number of steps supposed to follow this monolithic architecture into microservices architecture. We will cover up in the subsequent slides. Okay. So, so monolithic architecture having their own pros and cons. So when I talk about the pros, right, it is very simple. Okay. You have only single source. There are assume four developers in your team. You are a lead in the project. You can call up the developer and say that, okay, so you, the developer one, go and pick the login module and work on the things. He'll go to the source repo, check out the code, and he'll start the development. So like that, there are n number of developers can easily check out the code and they can go for the development. So it is very simple. For the development perspective, it's very simple because you have only one source code. You can check out, you get the requirement document from the business. You understand the problem. Now you can easily code. That is very simple. Not only that, you can easily and fastly develop the things. It's a developer friendly, I can say. And easy to develop deployment and performance also good because it's a single unit, right? Class to class communication is very easy. It's kind of object to object, right? How the object will be interacting with each other. It's very quick, very fast. So deployment also, it's a, it's a war kind of, right? It's a, when you are building your source code, it will give you a jar or war. You take that jar or war and go to your web application or application server, deploy it. It's a very one shot. Everything is done. Right? The development is easy. Performance is ultimate. Deployment also very easy. But it has the concern also. When it comes to flexibility and agility, there will be a problem. Assume when you choose the monolithic architect, right? The problem is, assume the Java is the base language for you. You picked up and developed the application, okay? So uh, now Python is coming, booming up. It has some advantages, some disadvantages also. Now, one particular area, Python is doing better than Java. So now you want you can't club the Python in your source code because your source code is single unit. You can't integrate the Python source code into your Java source code. That's a problem. So technology stack is limited. Not only that, the scalability problem will come. So as it is a single unit, right? It's a single war. You have to take that war and go to your application server. You will deploy it. Your application will bring up, right? So now the lot of load is coming into the application now, right? So what will happen? Your server can hold only some set of volume only. Exceeding that volume, the server will go for down or it will make crash. Correct. 
so now considering that you have to go for a scaling so you can't scale the things like horizontally in monolithic application you have to always go for the vertical scaling for the monolithic application that is cost oriented so much cost because you have to procure the high ram high memory server from the market which is very costly and also we have a problem in the fault isolation assume you have done a development one particular point of area some bug has happened so because of that your application may not up and running entire system will be collapsed right that's why monolithic has both pros and cons in their own terms how many of people now clearly understand what is monolithic architecture so what is the pros and cons what i have explained if you have any doubt please raise the hand we will discuss or just chat yes dang actually uh, you have to know java java is an essential skill only then you can understand the spring boot otherwise it will be hard for you so prime skill is java here so people in the comment box just give why if you understand what is monolithic and what is the problem and cons what i have explained so that we can move on to the next slide thank you pradeep what about others no active participant in the chat what happened a uh, horizontal scaling yes correct ravina you are right so number of units that we are going to cover up in the next slide okay thank you thank you all thank you let's move on to the next uh, slide which is about service oriented architecture okay so it's a, it's a kind of next evaluation from the monolithic architecture so here the here what we are going to do right we understand what we have discussed right so like login module inventory module payment module and notification module so this all entire modules are we are going to separate out now from the single unit so last slide i remember we are discussing as a single unit right now we identified the major component in your source code and we are going to isolate it as a independent component like login module as a separate entity inventory is a separate entity your payment module is a separate entity and your notification as a separate entity so i am going to segregate that single unit into different possible components so that the modularity will be increased the reusability is increased and moreover it is loosely coupled it's not a no more a high dependent system right it's because we are segregated into smaller components that's why it is loosely coupled so each service is self contain unit of functionality okay so how it is differing from monolithic to service architecture it is in monolithic it is a single unit but service oriented architecture it's a modular we are segregated the single unit into multiple modules so that you are achieving modularity reusability and moreover loosely coupled okay the the communication is easy for you you don't need to go for a single unit no more that's why it is giving a good performance in terms of flexibility 
in terms of scalability. Okay. An example, I think some of the e-commerce systems still in service oriented architect. Okay, so let me go to the uh, look and feel so that you people can understand exactly. I'm jumping into the slide here. Okay, so, so this is what I'm trying to say. So I'll go monolithic as a single unit of work, right? That's why it is a fully blocked. So when we are talking about service oriented architect, it is a coarse grained. Okay, that's what I'm telling. So it's a single unit of work. This is nothing but the login model. This is a inventory model. It is payment model and it is the notification model. So we identify the major component and breaking down into the independent entity. Okay, that's why it is service oriented architecture. Okay, now if you directly jumping into here, okay, so there will be a intermediator service bus will be sitting in middle, which is integrating the UI, the user and the backend services. Okay, you got it right. So service SVC bus is an intermediator communicator who is sitting middle between the customer and the service backend services it's a only one way of transaction between the two entities okay let's go back to the slide service oriented architecture here also some pros and cons are there every system has their pros and cons right so here flexibility is good scalability also good interoperability also good Maintenance is very easy. But the problem here is, right, if the user want to communicate to the login model, he has to go to service bus via he can reach the login model. So what happened? The performance overhead is happening in middle. So bottleneck is happening here because all the communications happening between this all network protocols. So here performance is degrading because of the communication in the network. And not only that, the initial setup and infrastructure cost is more because you have to build the infra to support the message broker and service registry. That's why it is cost is much in the budget when you are designing the architecture in service oriented architecture. So people just come and why if we have clear about the service oriented architecture. Feel free to ask the question so that I'm happy to help you. Just type why if you are clear about service oriented architecture. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to the microservices architecture. So microservices architecture is like uh, still the granular. Still how much ever you can go granular, that much ever microservices entities you can create so that it will be very easy in terms of scalability and interoperability and your networking about the communication between two modules. So here, microservices architecture decomposes an application into smaller, loosely coupled service. That's what we discussed, right? I'm just breaking down my single entity into how much ever granular I go, that much level I'll go and create the components. This is like a business problems. Login as a business problem. How you are going to order is a separate problem. So after ordering, definitely you have to reduce the count from the inventory, right? So inventory also is a separate component. You have to, once you get the order, 
right in in any of the flipkart or amazon you are very immediately you are getting the notification from e-commerce right so notification also a problem so how much ever you can go for your granular level that much you can go for your services you can go and communication between the two services using the protocol http and rest or messaging systems like kafka like solace those protocol is used for the inter communication between the entities or services so i'm just repeating again it's very much flexible scalable and adopt the different technology for the different services i put a use case right 10 minutes back suppose the python is doing the better compared to java then you can't integrate that right in terms of monolithic architecture or service oriented architecture but in microservices if you feel python is doing better than java in one kind of action you can still able to integrate two different microservices which is built on two different language that's a great interoperability is very good in microservices so the real time example still you can see netflix amazon ebay flipkart still they are in microservices architecture let's move on to the slide what we have revisited so i am going to the slide which is about the fine grain microservices services and this is how the representation looks like so once you user come into the your mobile app and ordering any of the product in his e-commerce application your login assume it is a login module so your request will come and hit the microservices login module and it will validate your authenticate it and it will return back to the response to ui so now login is completed now customer is interested to order one of the grocery now so he is ordering the grocery it's a inventory microservices where it will accept the inventory order place the order and update the inventory and send back the notification so how much ever fine granular i can do that much level i will build the system in the microservices architecture and note that every microservices system will have their own database that is a very advantages oriented okay so just type clear in the chat box if you are clear about all the three monolithic soe and microservices yes yes raja uh, we have some set of concerns also i am going to explain you in detail one minute okay let's move on to the next slide okay so you people can see my ppt right okay so now we talked about all the stuff right monolithic microservices and soe everything is fine so why the microservices we have so many are there why microservices so because the main advantages go like it supports http and service rest protocols it's very easy for the communication and as i said it's a small fine granular module so it is easy to deploy for example you have your code change in 
order services okay you don't need to disturb the login services or notification services so it's a only if you go to the your order services you do the development you just deploy that into your service ser server that's it work done so here the advantage is mainly goes for the deploying easy and it is also very much scalable and cloud enable you can deploy your microservices into aws easily azure easily and google also it is very easy so it is a cloud enabled service and also i said it's a scalable and flexible and resilience and fault isolation for example if we have one microservices talking to another microservices there will be a problem right sometimes when you are communicating to other microservices via rest api but it is giving the that microservice down assume it's a down so that time you will get the failure notification or failure call back says that 401 or 401 or 500 error something like that you will get it that you can easily handle uh, that is called fault isolation and I said it's a easy deployment also, very easy in the cloud. And challenges also we have in terms of microservices. As I said, we can go for the fine granular weight drill down and we can build the microservices architecture. Assume it is a login module and assume it is an inventory model, assume it is a notification services model. Okay. So now you have a distributed system in the server. Okay. So when the distribution is happening, what happened? You can't interact communication is very hard. Assume these two services are down. Now B1 is expecting the A1 response. There will be a problem right also as i said every microservices have their own database so if the call is not happening properly there are failure happen in your database also for example now you are ordering the grocery in flipkart application okay so assume in inventory 100 units are available. You are ordering 50 unit. So how much leftover in the inventory? It should be 50. But when you are about to update the inventory, some failure happened in this communication. There are chances that the 50 will be not be updated in DB it will be giving you the dirty read for the users. But we have a mechanism to handle it that we are going to cover up in this, during these lectures and sessions going forward. But I'm telling you that, what are the concerns we have with the microservices architecture? So when it comes to data management, as I said in the example, it has the problem in the intercommunication and data management complexity. And as I said, it's a cloud oriented one. So for example, if you are going to deploy the component into Azure or AWS, you can deploy very easily, I said. Now, login will be required only few times, right? Once you step into the e-commerce application, you used to order so much, so many orders, you will place it. So that's why the login services, we can limit it as a two in the AWS cloud platform. But order inventory, people used to order so much by using the e-commerce application. That's why I have deployed my order services into four different 
servers in the cloud and notification i deployed once in the server so based on the load i can able to easily scale up and scale in very easily so tomorrow you might be in understand right so in the big day right in amazon and all we'll get the independency offer so that time people go and apply or order so much during that offer period by the time if i would like to scale up the order inventory quickly that i can able to do it very easily with the help of microservices and spring boot that's why it is having a lot of advantages also challenges in terms of data management and communication between the two entities and initial setup infra and moreover it has the security all right so you can't directly communicate to your microservices i need to validate my request whether the request is coming into the correct person or not i have to validate that is also one of the challenge but these challenges are overcome easily that i am going to cover up in the day 3 day 4 session with the hands on let's moving into the next one why spring boot and why it is needed now we understand all about microservices but why spring boot is required here spring boot is advantage is like it's a java ecosystem that address several key need of challenges in modern application development it's very easy to develop the your application in spring boot with the help of java and spring ecosystems it's a very much developer friendly people who know spring right here they can understand clearly there is no xml configuration it is everything is auto wired here what is auto wire don't worry don't panic i'll cover up in the day 2 or day 3 videos so as i said it is a very development easy because it has the embedded servers and auto configuration there are so many n number of advantages we have with spring boot because as i said it is a wrapper around the spring ecosystem whatever the spring providing to you in terms of spring batch for the batch processing spring jpa spring doo all the flavors will be used by spring boot so it is very much easy to develop your application in microservices with help of spring boot it's easy speed to market and as i said it's a cloud native capabilities are there i am moving to the last section about what is the difference between spring and spring boot so people who are now in the spring here understand that we have n number of entities are there in spring echo world so as i said it's aop aspect and spring core jpa batch orm jdbc all the components are available in spring echo world all the things are used in spring boot also how it is being done that i will explain in detail with hands on in day 2 so one happy scenario is like there is no xml based configuration so in spring what you will do in the xml you will go to the bean class and inject the property about the dependent classes and you will go for the configuration but in spring boot all the things will be easily managed by the auto configuration so it is a very developer free so so it will be focusing about 
what is the business problem is provided to us instead of breaking our head in the configurations. So Spring Boot will take care of all the stuff related to the configurations. So as a developer, we should focus about the business problems only. So it is, that's why I'm saying that it is a developer friendly. You can easily focus on the business problem and go for the solutioning and you can easily deploy the code into cloud native enabled application and speed to market. That's why Spring Boot is very much advantage compared to others. That's why it is hot in the market. So hope you people understand the difference between Spring and Spring Boot. Just type why in the chat box if you are clear about the topic, what we have discussed in the session. Any doubt, please raise the hand or give a chat box. I'm happy to help you to answering your queries. Any doubts? I treat it as S from everyone. Shall I take it that way? Thank you so much for your replay back. So I'm going back, back to the, uh, the general information again. The first three session will be free to attend. And the fourth session onward, the Zoom meeting leave will be shared to the registered participant only. So there is no batch shifting, no refund. And you can join this WhatsApp community and follow the announcement option. There will be a number given here. You can reach them for your sort of queries to be addressed. As I said earlier, we will be providing the session recording in Logic Tab Technologies YouTube and notes will be accessed through the graphy. And the first two sessions recording will be available in YouTube channel and link will be shared in the WhatsApp community. So if you are interested and keep learning with me, just enroll this course and go for the payment process. Any questions, please raise your hands. I'm free to answer. I think someone raised the hand, right? Just one minute. Yeah. Uh, hello, Pradeep. You can able to unmute yourself and talk to me. Yeah. Can you hear? Yes, me? Pradeep. Yeah. Please proceed. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please go on. Yeah, it's just the same um, question I asked in the chat, like because. Uh, I have absolutely no knowledge on Spring Core. I only like have some, you know, academic reading knowledge and stuff like that. So will this be a problem? So attending this course, like. Uh, um, okay, uh, uh, Spring is a uh, totally, there has a lot of components, Pradeep. Mm -hmm. As I said, it's a Spring Core, Spring Bash, so many components are there. But to learning the Spring Boot, if you mm -hmm. know the basics about the spring internal, how it works, mm -hmm. it will help you yeah. to follow my lecture easily. Okay. So it is a, it's not a theoretical session, right? Going yeah. forward, it will be hands-on oriented. So then yeah. and there, I will explain you how mm -hmm. the spring will internally works so that you can easily catch up my session yeah. and easily follow the hands-on. I'm happy to help you if yeah. you stuck up in any place yeah okay got it just want to like whenever you explain like if you can correlate things okay without spring boot how can we do this and stuff like that very high level you don't have to go in very detail yes, so yes. that way anyway, I can 
anyway to cover up the you people like right uh, who don't know spring maybe i will cover up in some half an hour session yeah where i will be explain about uh, how the spring internally works so that you people can easily follow my next session onwards yeah that i'll make it arranged Pratik. yeah that would be great you know definitely so, i am happy to help you otherwise also like i will be reading like uh, you know a spring core also like but uh, if you can uh, go over that that would be great as it's well. completely fine it's completely fine uh, if you don't know much about spring no problem yeah. we will cover up in our hands on yeah so are they uh, people are still using the spring core uh, when you have a spring boot now like uh, are they no are, like, most no no there are there are still applications still uh, handling the spring core that is also there in the market and people who are in the monolithic architect right they are slowly moving into microservices now how this transformation is going to happen maybe we will will arrange in some extra session and we will cover up that also how we have to move your monolithic into microservices step by step we will discuss in later so are you going to give us uh, some project uh, i mean like not a uh, no okay i i think i can pick the some case study okay, okay. so example case study we will drill down that how mm -hmm. we can convert this monolithic into uh, microservices maybe you will get the clear idea what are the steps you have to consider before converting your monolithic into microservices what are the points you have to more focus in terms of conversion that steps i will give you so that you can have a idea about how the conversion will happen and also i'm not sure whether you're going to cover the course contents i'm not sure whether you already covered it or like you're going to do that tomorrow session um when i click the link yeah. uh, on the course content uh okay. it's given an error on your website so uh as i said right i mean this is the powerpoint where we are going to discuss about the agenda right the agenda ppt what i have shown you that's the day one activity okay so you're going to cover okay yeah the day one activity is completed okay if you have any questions about day one please shoot up thank you thank you pradeep uh, you can mute and unmute mute yourself so that the other participant can go for it there is no separate amount yes it is a recorded uh, session it will be available in the logitech technologies youtube channel and also the you will be getting the link from the support team i think uh, yeah saraswati please you can unmute and shoot your question saraswati i am happy to help you yeah uh, as pradeep told right already uh, same i am adding something if you have a good uh, site uh, for spring related we can go through on that uh, before uh, starting the okay course. okay definitely definitely i will i'll help on you that item okay so you just uh, uh, enroll that uh, in whatsapp community in the whatsapp community i'll share the link which will be useful to refresh your uh, spring knowledge so that yeah. tomorrow when you join and discuss about the next to topic it will be helpful for you yeah, yeah i am already in the community okay then i will give the links to you just to go through that will help you thank you so much you are welcome sir you can mute us yeah thank you any other doubt clarification please raise your hand or we are good to close the session so i'm just repeating people who are interested yeah hi ravina yes please i just unmute and talk hi sir this is ravina yes i can able to hear you yes yeah. please ravina yeah. so i have this query um uh, maybe uh, i can i will enroll in this session but i may not be able to attend few of the sessions so uh, uh, my query was like can i access this recordings i mean Yes, the yes. one i yes. miss every day so that it would be very continuous and constant so that so that i don't miss anything in the middle that was the only concern i have so it would be shared I mean the recordings and the sessions would be shared every day right yes if you are enrolling the course mm -hmm. 
the mm -hmm. recording will be available to you praveena okay the uh, i mean if the session is uh, taken today morning i mean i'm in est time zone so okay sir it would be yeah yeah, yeah today session well. will be today and tomorrow session will be available in uh, mm -hmm. logitech technologies youtube channel and also the link will be shared in the whatsapp community okay that you can go through if you have any doubt feel free to text or tomorrow when we are recapping the day 2 right mm -hmm. there we will mm -hmm. discuss if you okay. have any questions then day 2 i mean every day the sessions will be recorded and then will be given the same day yep. okay yep, yep. if you are enrolled yes all the okay. things will be recorded yes correct sure. thank you you're welcome okay if if you are done um we are good to close the call i'm just to stop sharing okay then fine thank you so much for attending this uh, uh, free master class so tomorrow is a big day day 2 we will be exploring more microservices in detail please attend at 8 pm ist happy learning thank you all